Hello, hello, everybody. Um, it's Friday night. This is the final night of 777. Uh, if you're joining us, uh, welcome. God bless you. I uh, hope you've had a really good day and can settle in uh, for the next hour, hour and 15 minutes or so while we do what we feel like will be a very exciting teach, oh, yeah. right? Sure. So we're gaining our audience and um, hoping that even though it's Friday and it's beautiful outside, that maybe people are going to choose to um, be a part of what's going on tonight. So Pastor John, you want to say I, anything? I was going to explain something about last night. Um, last night we had the the model that we were using, um, the blueprint we were using as we taught. Um, because of the way that Facebook is structured, if you had a phone, if you were just watching on your phone, there was no way to like go and look at the blueprint and still listen to the video. So I think it might have been confusing for some people. If you can watch it on your com first of all, if you can watch 777 on your computer or if you understand how to stream it to your TV, that's going to be the most awesome way to watch it anyways. Now, what you can do is if you have access to a computer, you can do one of two things. You can watch on your computer and you can pull the blueprint up on your smartphone or you can watch on your smartphone and pl pull the blueprint up on your computer. And um, that way you can look at both things. If you only have a computer, you could open two tabs, go to Facebook on both of them. So you can look at the blueprint while you listen to the audio of last night. Something that I believe is going to happen um, I believe after tonight, you're going to want to go back and look at last night's blueprint and maybe even re-listen to last night's message because yeah. last night was probably um, one of the most jam-packed teachings I've ever heard ever. <laughs> There's just a lot of information in it and it's incredible. And what I've found with services like that is a lot of times, even if I teach it, I like to go back and relook at my notes just so I can, because there's so much. And so um, that's the beauty of what we have access to now. If we had all been sitting in the sanctuary listening to that, then we would have all been like, wow, that was amazing. And we would have all left with probably 20% of it. But now you have the opportunity to go back and listen to it until you literally, when I believe we're the most effective with, with what something we've learned is when we can communicate it to other people. That's right. And so if you will listen to it until it's literally in you, um, something I feel like the Lord said earlier while I was praying for, for tonight um, was, you know, that the word can pierce to the very bone and marrow. And if we can get this teaching in our bones, if this can literally become part of who we are and how we think about things, how we look at the world around us, how we encounter different scenarios, that's when it's really going to change us and allow um, and allow it to change those around us through us. Amen. So um, I'm going to ask Kayla how many we've got joining us so far. About 20 people. Okay. Not bad for a Friday evening uh, when everyone really is supposed to be home now because of uh, what's going on. I think that goes into effect for the state of Georgia this evening sometime. Yeah, six, I think um, the stay at home restrictions. And so um, I encourage you again to have your Bible open. I've written the scriptures out within my notes. Uh, and John has got a Bible here in case we need to look something up, but uh, definitely have a, a notebook and uh, a pen in hand so you can jot some things down. Here, here's the thing. You can listen to this and that's great. Um, and you may want to listen to it the first time, just soak it in and then go back as, as Pastor John was saying and um, listen again and make some notes. But you, there is no way you can retain all this information unless you have uh, a, a really, really uh, great photographic memory or something like that. But this, again, is a, is a lot of information that um, the Lord has just poured down uh, throughout last night and today and just super excited to teach you. So let's open up with prayer. Father, we just love you. We come to you, Lord, with confidence as you have taught us through your word in Hebrews 4.16. We can just approach you honestly, boldly, with confidence, Lord. And that's where we can obtain your mercy and find your grace to help us in our time of need. And right now, we need you. And so, Father, speak to us tonight. I pray for everyone listening and those who will listen as the days go by. 
And God, that you would just um, hear their cry, help them in their time of need. And God, that they would find your grace and obtain your mercy to walk in it in the midst of everything that's happening in this world. There still is a way to find peace. And it's through you. In Jesus' name, amen. So tonight's message is um, the final part of 777. And it's called Stay Hungry and Stay Thirsty. And, you know, the goal of this whole thing is to equip you, to equip ourselves with a way through the model that we talked about. And um, I'm going to show this just so you can see it. Um, the model that the Lord downloaded to us, uh, spiritual discipline of how to walk in grace. And I believe that that model is going to be of great use. Uh, Jonah, Pastor John said that it was posted. And so it is a way through the model to help you stay hungry and thirsty after 777 is over. Um, the normal state of a Christian should be hungry and thirsty for God. Amen. And the Bible tells us that God satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. That's Psalm 107 verse 9. God satisfies the thirsty and he fills the hungry with good things. And so tonight, as, as we launch this teach, what will help us stay hungry and thirsty? Well, this model of spiritual discipline of the grace walk for sure. And, and the Lord showed me the reason. The model is threefold. And, and I want you to think about this. And then you can go back and look at the model again. It, first of all, it was established on God's word. And second, it was birthed through prayer and fasting. That's what happened this week. And here's the third thing. It will prove that you're hungry and thirsty if you stay with it. Amen. That's right. That's right. There is no way to go through that process and not be hungry and thirsty. And so your spiritual hunger and thirst is expressed by the degree at which you pursue God. So let's talk about pursuing God. And I said something to uh, Pastor Jonah this morning. If you're snacking on something else, you will not be hungry for God. <laughs> so good. If you are snacking on something else, you will not be hungry or thirsty for God, and you will not be able to pursue him effectively. And, and this is hard for me to stay seated on because I'm so excited to share this with you tonight. The pursuit at this next level of living, which is, is the goal, that's what we've been doing all week to get to the place where we're at this next level of living. The pursuit of God and the next level of living is very important. So the in the waiting time, listen to me. Why? Because here's what's happening. There is an eruption of new ministries and movements that's going to be birthed out of what's going on right now. Right. And, and those of you that are prophetic absolutely understand what I just said. God is going to break open the womb of the church. Do you hear me? He is getting ready to break open the womb of the church. And so those that are not pursuing at this next level are going to look at everything that's happened. And all, here's what they're going to see. They're going to see closed doors and the end of the road. That's very depressing. In fact, we're already hearing that. We're already seeing that. But if you will come up higher, amen, if you will come up to that next level of living in prayer, you will see the doorway to the new day that's ahead. That's, that's so exciting to me. The doorway to the new day that's ahead. Did you want to add anything right there? No, sir, or are we going to keep going? going All right. So I want to give you um, tonight is going to be some things that you can literally write down to stay hungry for God and to be thirsty. Here's four steps that um, we've discussed throughout the day. Um, I even called a couple of people that, that are, uh, I feel like, you know, intercessors and praying four steps to stay hungry for God. So listen to this. Number one, and now this is our responsibility. We have to own this thing, Pastor John. We can't just, you know, uh, loaf around during this waiting time. Number one, create an atmosphere to pursue God. You and I have to create an atmosphere. How can you do that? I'm going to give you some examples. 
You may already have your own examples. If you've got a great example that I don't mention, I would ask you to comment and send it yeah. to Kayla and, and we can discuss it. Four steps to stay hungry for God. Create, number one, create an atmosphere to pursue him. And here's how. My wife, Donna, does this all the time. Worship music. Uh, Pastor Jonah's wife, Emily, my daughter, does this all the time. Worship music. You may do that. To create your atmosphere to pursue the Lord, you may need worship music to lead you into that. Here's a, here's Now, you're going to think this is crazy, but sometimes I like to do this. Candles. Sometimes I like to turn the lights out. We've done it at the church multiple times and light candles. It creates an atmosphere to pursue God. I want to say too, because some people, some people already are going to tell you that's emotionalism, yes, and sensationalism. Well, you're crazy. Blah, 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 okay. blah, blah, blah. This is what, this is what I want to say about that. There's a reason that, that candles are, there's a re, not just candles. There's a reason that certain things are, are connected to what we would consider a romantic atmosphere. Intimate. And it's because those things lead us into a heart that yes. desires intimacy. That didn't come from humanity. That came from our creator. Amen. And so the same way that we desire intimacy in an atmosphere that most, um, perfectly suits intimacy, we have a savior and we, we are the bride and he is the groom. That's I don't right. know about you, but I love to be in an intimate setting with my bride. He is the exact same way. Yes. So it is not above or crazy or some, you know, whatever thing to think that to create an atmosphere for intimacy is not, not biblical because there, there should be a, the problem in the church today is that those things seem distant and odd to some people because intimacy with Jesus is nowhere on their radar. Intellect and intimacy are not the same thing. And relationship cannot depend on. on intellect alone. It That's takes right. intellect and intimacy together in order to have relationship. That's right. Here's another way. Um, you may need quiet. You may need a quiet. You may be the opposite of what I said that, that my wife loves to do. Worship music may not be what you need to create the atmosphere. You may want dead silence. Some of you may need a computer or a desk so that you can write and journal. You may need just a one lamp that you can turn on, click, and it creates uh, an atmosphere. Um, some of you may need a view. You may want to be out by the lake, or you may be uh, by your. Maybe you have a pool in a nice backyard, or you have the beautiful scene of the mountains like we do all around us. A view can create an atmosphere. What I'm saying to you is make it special. Amen. Create a, a special time to pursue God. Sometimes I just use my prayer shawl. How about that? I just love to reach out to those very corner tassels and just envelop myself in that prayer shawl in my office. So here's here's that's the first step to stay hungry for God. Here's the second second way: create a place to pursue Him. If you, you can create an atmosphere, but maybe you need to create a place. How about your favorite chair? You may need to to put your favorite chair somewhere and get up at a time where you can just pursue the Lord, a, a, a sofa. How about, I've seen this, lots of people have turned their closet into a prayer closet. Create a place to pursue him, a, a special room in your house, a secret place. Maybe you don't want nobody to know about it. It's a secret place just for you and him, a dwelling place. I thought about another place that we're going to have is Christ Walk Connect. It literally is a place that you can go to, an app that you can download onto your phone. I think it's going to be a uh, available by Monday. Um, and, and how about this, a church that moves in the spirit? How about creating that kind of place? Find yourself, when we can all gather back into our churches, the church that moves in the spirit. Number three, create space to pursue him. You don't need to be so confined that you can't move wherever this atmosphere and place is. You need to be able to open up enough room to dance. How about that? You may need space to dance and pursue him. You may need enough room that you can literally move around or kneel. Or how about have space to uh, to journal? You can see that, look at these journal notes. This is from all week. This is lots of journaling and studying. If, if I didn't write it down, I wouldn't be able to teach you. I, I, I can't remember all of this. I, I have to have my notes. And um, you may need a, a space where you can rock. I have a rocker that's special to me in my office. 
um, and it sits in the corner of my office. And lots of times I will go to my rocker and, and sit by a little table and a lamp. And that, that creates a space for me to pursue God. And here's the final place or, or space. You may need to be able to lay flat out. How about that? You may need to be able to go flat on the ground before him. And here's the fourth way to stay hungry for God. Create set times to pursue him. This is so important. Consistency will make a commitment. Make sure that you create a set time or times, especially in the waiting time, that's your praying time to pursue him. So I'm going to go back over these. Tonight we're talking about after 777 is over, how can we stay hungry and thirsty and pursue God? And these are four steps to stay hungry for God. Create an atmosphere to pursue him. Create a place to pursue him. Create space to pursue him. And create set times to pursue him. The reason I keep saying create, we've talked about this off and on, and I think Pastor Donald wants to share something, is because creation brings about birth. Yes. And the whole thing that's going on right now is new ministries are going to be birthed through this. I'm telling you, there's going to, church will never be the same. There's going to be new ministries that will be birthed through this, and they're weighty and they're strategic. God knows what he's doing because they're going to carry, listen, they're going to carry new ways, and they're going to carry new expressions of our Father God. And, and so it's a birthing process um, these things have never been seen before on earth is, is what I think is getting ready to happen. And church will never be the same. I was talking with my friend who's an apostle. And uh, today this is, is what uh, Apostle Jesse said. God gives us permission to not do church as usual. That's what he's doing. And then it started with this whole online thing. I love that. Because this, this is why his presence is hovering and moving and brooding. And that goes back to Genesis 1-2 in the creation. Create an atmosphere, create a place to pursue, create space to pursue, create set times to pursue. Because what's happening is God is birthing out new opportunity and new ministry. It's going to come, I promise you. And so this is why the voice of the Lord is speaking as he's hovering and brooding and moving all around us. He's going to speak new ministries to be birthed, and they're going to carry new ways and true expressions of the Father. Uh, Miss Gail said, she says, it won't stale bread, right. molded, mildewed mildew. bread, right? This, this is what's happening. God's going to birth out something that's never been seen before. Amen? Right. And it's a new creation. Um, one thing that if you... I talked more. I talked more in length about this last Wednesday. If you want to go check out our youth YouTube page, at some point this week, it's uh, Walk It Out Students on YouTube. You can check that out. I, I have a, a teaching on this, um, but I believe that we're in a time of God restoring the garden. And if we look at the Garden of Eden in the beginning of time, um, it was a place, a beautiful place, mm. unlike anywhere else, that God created so that he could be with man and he could go to visit man he could be intimate with man in, mm. a, in a beautiful setting okay but genesis something that's important to me to understand in these four steps is that every single of the four steps starts out with this create 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 if we go to genesis two fifteen, we see that the lord god took the man and put him in the garden of eden to work it and to keep it and I want us to understand that it is our responsibility to create an atmosphere, a place, a space, and time, and then God will move. It's not up to God to force himself upon you and prove that he loves you. Relationship requires effort from both sides. Yes. We learned in our model. Do you have your model? I do. We learned in our model. And the most the reason it's a circle, the reason it's shaped the way it is, is because the presence of God is ever moving. It's ever present in time of need. He is waiting on you to come to him. It is up to us to create an atmosphere where he 
where there is light, there can be no darkness. So there has to be the opportunity for an atmosphere full of purity. Then there has to be a place of seclusion. Jesus said, go into your closet and shut the door. That's yes, a statement from the Savior. That's a, He understood that. Not to mention, where do we see Jesus going to get alone? To a literal garden. We see him go and leave the people behind him. And he says, I'm going to go pray and be with the Father. And so that is a model. It's not just a model in what he said. It's a model in watching where Jesus went to pray that we can understand the value of relationship. But it's important for us to understand that we have responsibility in this relationship to create. If my house is a place of um constant busyness, constant struggle, constant bickering, constant turmoil. There is no room for intimacy between my wife and I in a house filled with those things. And there's no room for intimacy with your heavenly father, with the person of Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. There's no place for intimacy in those settings if you don't create intentionally. It has to be intentional that you create an atmosphere, a place, a space, and specific time to be with him. And the important thing for us to grasp is in this creation, and there's a simple truth that I learned in children's church when I was very, very, very young. And it is this, what you feed will grow and what you starve will die. Amen. So in us being intentional in this time, we worship him, we sing praises to him, we sacrifice for him, we do intentional things. One thing the Lord showed me is, um, you know, the verse that says, greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. My viewpoint on fasting now is so different because fasting is an opportunity for me to weaken intentionally the heat that's in the world and strengthen the heat that is within me. And so when I when I take effort to create time, space, place, atmosphere that strengthens and feeds the he that is within me, the he that engulfs me, the he that desires to speak and minister to me. When I do that intentionally, then I open up the opportunity for God to speak purely to me, for yes. God to touch me, for there to be divine influence Amen. upon my heart that now becomes reflected in my life. That's so good. And, and that divine influence on the heart is reflected and it's because of his grace. That's right. Um, you know, that's one of the things we talked about earlier in the week and, and it's been a, a continuation every night. So what are we talking about tonight? My responsibility is to equip this church. That's what I have been called to do. Pastor John, the same thing. All of the teachers here, we are to equip you, the body, the saints. And so I feel like that's what God has absolutely done for the last seven nights. And so now it's your responsibility and your opportunity. That's, right. that's what I want to say. It, it, you know, it's not really a responsibility. It's an opportunity yeah. to be able to pursue God and, and to continue to, to go higher to that next level of living in your Christian life where you can go from victory to victory. You can literally go from glory to glory, assignment to assignment, right? Breakthrough to breakthrough, expectancy to expectancy. I think we put that one on there. So, so how can you and I do a self-check? What, what are the ways that I can check my hunger level? Because you're going to have to. That's right. I mean, um, you've got to, to make sure that you're using your time wisely. I'm talking two weeks from now when we're still in this, whatever this crisis is, you know, I doubt it's going to be gone in two weeks. Um, according to the president, it's going to be a hard couple of uh, 10 to 14 days, but you know what? We can do this and we can do it together with Jesus, but we need ways that we can check our hunger level to make sure that we're hungry and thirsty. Now I'm going to, I'm going to give you 10, ways that I have really prayed through uh, throughout last night and today. And the first one, you may not like this, but I'm going to tell you, if you want to know if you're hungry or not, are you listening to me? Do you want to know if you're hungry or thirsty for the pursuing the pursuit of God? Number one, you will give the full tithe and offering amidst everything that's going on. Did you hear what I just said to you? If you are hungry, you will desire you will, and your pursuit for Almighty God to come up higher to the next level of living, you will literally be, be so excited to give the full tithe and offering that you cannot stand yourself. That is the, I think that's the number one test. What do you think about I, that? I agree. I, I was telling Pastor Chip today, I, 
I don't think I don't think just the full tithe is a test because there are people I know who are far from God who understand the biblical principle of tithing and they see the fruit of it in their life and they give religiously because they understand the value of it because a lot of them are money people and they're business people and they understand the value of how to properly invest your money and they want to invest it in the kingdom. That's cool. That's great. Whatever. That's not the test of a hungry person. I, I, Emily and I, and I'm, I'm not meaning this in any pride. I'm saying because of how much we love the Lord, we look for opportunities. We, we, we constantly, because we understand that we're not giving to a church. We're not giving to a person. We're not giving to a place. We're giving to a kingdom. We're giving to a savior. And it's because we have seen the fruit of it in our lives. And we, I, I, I want nothing more than every bit of Jesus I can have. And if giving continues to provide blessing through, not even through money, very rarely do we give money and receive money. But I would, there was, there was a time I got really convicted. Um, I was listening to somebody talk about um, just how blessed they had been financially. Um, I had just uh, stepped into full-time uh, ministry with the church. I'd taken a little bit of a pay cut. And I was thinking, well, God, you know what? I would love to be blessed financially. That would be amazing. I just made a pretty big sacrifice for you guys. I'm just being like super fleshy in my ear. And <laughs> The Lord said, I've given you bonus after bonus after bonus after bonus, but not a single one of them was monetary. So you decide, do you want to just be blessed financially? or Do you want exceedingly and abundantly more than you could ever ask for or imagine? Because that doesn't come through money. That comes through my spirit. Yes. And so every time we give, I give expecting to receive an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in, a, in, in relation to the sacrifice at which we're willing to make. And so that's why I believe it takes the full tithe and offerings on top of that and you giving sacrificially to help those around you, to help those in need, to help whatever the situation you you're just looking to serve and bless because that's the heart of Jesus. So how can you check your hunger level? Obviously, looking at your tithe and your offering. I'm going to tell you something. Over the years, we've been doing this a long time. A lot of you know that. Um, I'm 52 years old, and all five of our children have been raised and taught the responsibility and the opportunity through worship and the tithe and the offering. And over the years, I, I choose not to know what anybody in this church tithes. I don't want to know. And if you want to know why I don't want to know, you can check with me sometime and I'll tell you why I don't want to know. I've seen, I've seen it done all different ways over, over the years. I don't want to know. But I do want to know if my children are tithing. And there are times over the years when I would go to Donna and I would say, are they tithing? And every time, we could we could gauge to see how hungry they were for God and how on track they were by their tithe and their offering. That's why I put it in the number one slot. Number two, consistency in online church attendance. Ah, right now. I can check your hunger level by by understanding if you are consistent in your online church attendance right now. That's interesting to me, because if you're not, if you're using this time to take a break from church, oh my goodness, that is there is no hunger there and thirst for righteousness. And, and so here's, here's the telltale. When we are able to meet again in the house of God, your consistency in church attendance and service will be a sure way to let you know if you're hungry and thirsty for God and you're pursuing him. Number three, this is huge. Listen to me. I want you to do what's called a friend inventory, <laughs> not an inventory, a friend inventory. I want you to look at the friends that you keep. And I want you to truly go before the Lord as you pursue him and say, is this affecting my hunger level for you? Are there people that you on a regular basis are around that pull you from your pursuit of God. It's got to be addressed. And, and I'm telling you, this is huge. This is important. Your friends <clears throat> could very well keep you from pursuing God and being hungry. Number four, what you discuss, watch, and listen to at home is a gauge to let you know your hunger level. Number five, what you do in private, and only you and God know that, but it could affect your hunger level and how you pursue him. Number six, your humility level. 
That's big. Number seven. And I'm going to ask Jonah to explain this one a little more because this is a way I've taught him over the years. Are you doing the last three things God told you to do? I want you to take a minute and I want you to write down the last three things that you know God told you to do. That will be a sure way for you to truly do a self-check on your hunger level. Can you explain that a little better? Yeah, and I, I actually just had a, a conversation. It's actually our last podcast we did for the youth um, with one of my cousins who's in ministry in Alabama. And we had a, a pretty lengthy conversation about this as part of his testimony where we both kind of talked about how we were guilty of being called to something or somewhere and about three weeks, three months, a year into it. <laughs> yeah. What God, there's, there's this mixture of things. It's either what he's called you to becomes too complicated or it becomes too boring to you. And a lot of times I believe the complication and the boredom both come from a lack of intimacy. And so you, you lose sight of the calling. And so you begin to go back to what's comfortable and what's normal. And you begin to bring these things in that you can grab in your own power. And before you know it, we go back to what Pastor Chips taught us about what's in your hands. And what, when you begin to look in your hands, everything you can see is stuff that you're making yourself busy with, whether intentionally or whether just accidentally. And the things you're called to begin to take a back seat. And so um, we have been here for... I don't know, maybe a year and a half. Probably a year and a half. We've been here probably a year and a half. Um, Emily and I had just gotten married. We had not been married long. Um, we had our own our own place finally. We had our own business. We were doing a lot. We got married, um, started our business, and moved into our house on the same weekend. And um, not, not to mention we were 19. Um, we were still figuring out. We are still figuring out ministry and all these different things. And um, I had allowed myself so quickly, whether it was because of fun, whether it was because of busyness, whether it was because, well, I'm a man now and I'm married and I'm going to make my own decisions. and I'm going to do whatever the heck I want to do. Whatever it was, pride, arrogance, whatever these different things, I had brought so much onto my plate that I wasn't doing anything effectively. And um it really came out of, and this is what I believe too, is I believe that you're always hungry for something. And I believe that your hunger is one of the things that drives you. And when you look at the things in your hands, when we, whatever we're doing, whoever that accomplishes something for is whoever our hunger is to please. Mm. And so if I'm, what I'm doing is accomplishing something for the kingdom, then my hunger is for the Father. If whatever I'm doing benefits me and me alone or me and my family alone or me and my buddies alone or whatever, I'm, I am fighting and I am starving and I am hungry for me. And so it's so it's dangerous. True. And it, this is the other thing that's important. If you, you can attach you know, you can attach a number three to number seven, because if you don't have people around you who will remind you of your callings, then you'll very quickly lose sight of them. Um, and so one thing we have to do is, and this is something that my, my cousin said in the podcast, we have to keep our callings fresh. We have to constantly remind ourselves and we have to constantly have those around us who call out our callings in us. And so um, it, it's important to have people who will speak to you, who will speak into you, who will pull things out of you and I've been reading Proverbs this week, and it doesn't matter what the chapter of Proverbs is about. There's at least four chapters that say that the wise man loves reproof. He loves rebuke. He loves correction. So have those people in your lives who the moment you step out, they'll correct you and bring you back to where you're called to be. Okay. And then number eight, and you mentioned this, are you walking in what God called you to do? Are you currently walking and what God has called you to do. That is a way to let you know, are you hungry? Are you pursuing him? Number nine, is your waiting time right now praying time? Are you using this time to be diligent to seek the Lord? And number 10, disciplining yourself spiritually will make sure you're hungry. That's why I think the Lord gave us this model in the midst of everything we're doing, to walk in his grace, a spiritual discipline, a model to walk in his grace. I'm going to read through all 10 of them quickly. Ways that you can check your hunger level. This is so important. Are you giving the full tithe and offering? Are you consistent 
in church online attendance. What about your friends that you're keeping? And I'm going to say this. John Maxwell taught me something years ago. You are becoming the five people that you spend most of your time with. That's right. There is so much truth in that. Had a, we had a youth pastor growing up that used to say, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. That's right. Number four, what you discuss, watch and listen to at home. Number five, what do you do in private? Number six, you, your humility level. Number seven, are you doing the last three things that God told you to do? Number eight, are you walking in what God has called you to do? Number nine, waiting time is praying time. And number 10, disciplining yourself spiritually. Really quick, I want to say to number seven and number eight, don't confuse those as the same thing. Number seven is what you will be doing for God. Number eight is who you are for God. Yes. So you to be number seven is what he has called you to do. So that, that's the difference in those two things. So why are we doing this? I feel like we're giving you a list of, of checkoff things. Yes, in a sense, because we need to come up higher right now in prayer and our daily living. Why? Because of everything that's going on around us. We cannot stay where we currently are. We have to come up higher. And, and the Lord during this time is going to. What you're going to see, I believe, fully, is when this starts coming, we come down off of this thing. The Lord's going to unite ministries and business streams together. Right. I've, I've been saying that for almost a year um, for what I've been calling hybrid partnerships. I don't know what else to call it, where you, um, you bring two things together that not normally would be together to create a certain type of power, right? And so we're going to see unexpected collaborations. We in this ministry are already starting to see it. And there's going to be these unexpected collaborations, I believe, with different church denominations. Amen. That's what I believe is going to happen. And it will be like a mixture of costly oils that are coming together. And here's, here's what the beauty is. The fragrance is going to smell different. Amen. And the effect will be like none ever before. The church, when the church can be the church that Jesus really wanted it to be. And, and, and I can see revival and I can see reformation and I can see a, an awakening that will collide all together in, in the midst of these uh, streams of new ministries and businesses coming together and denominations not being so separated anymore. And, and so we need to get ready. Here's here's what I think it's going to be. Evangelism on steroids. How about that? We need to get ready for it because we're going to see, uh, I, I said this to uh, evangelist Gail Heaton uh, because she truly is our evangelist in-house. She has the heart for it, but here's why. And we're going to see more of this. Anytime Gail Heaton gets up to share at the church or wherever she is, you hear Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. She preaches evangelism at, at all times. But here's the difference. When you are really operating in that office of an evangelist, you will not only preach Jesus, 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 but it will always, I'm going to say always, I'm going to say it again, always be accompanied by signs, wonders, and miracles. That's the difference. And so when when this when we come off of this time, Pastor Jonah, and God brings the church back to where it needs to be, and he's united ministries and business streams and crossing denominations, and for once we can be united in Christ because that's what God wants the church to be, we're going to see evangelism on steroids globally like we've never seen it before, and we're going to see People preaching Jesus, 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 accompanied by signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen? I'm excited about that. All right, here's another point I want to make. Hungry Christians. Now, I'm talking, these, these are the ones who desire to be at the next level of living. You truly are paying attention to the model of walking in grace. Hungry Christians, I want you to remember two things. And this is kind of where we're going to end tonight. And it's going to take a few minutes to get through this. Number one, your desperation will determine your destination. Yes, sir. 
Now I'm telling you, God shared that with me this morning, how desperate you are to be hungry and to pursue him will determine where you go. And I told you the holding pattern is right now. And the illustration is like a plane. When a plane circles the airport, it's holding, it's holding. And then when the air traffic controller says you can land, it is go. And that plane picks up speed. It's accelerated. <laughs> and you get down on that ground and you can move on to your next destination. So your desperation, pursuit of Jesus, determines your destination. And, and that desperation means that you uh, surrender to yourself, you surrender yourself, you, you surrender your plans, you surrender your ways, and it's replaced with an unending hunger for Jesus Christ and his goodness. Right. That goes all the way back to the verse that we started with tonight. The Bible tells us that God satisfies the thirsty and he fills the hungry with good things. Psalm 107.9. And, and so when you and I get desperate enough to pursue God on a higher level because we're so hungry and thirsty, our destination will be all of the new opportunities getting ready to come our way. Number two, um, hungry Christians need to remember two things. Here's the second one. I want you to listen to this, and I really want you to write it down. The real crisis in the church today is not the coronavirus. Now, I really prayed about this. Here's the crisis. Famine without hunger and a dry land with no one that's thirsty. The real crisis in the church today is not this pandemic of the coronavirus. As big as it seems globally, and I'm sure a lot of people may disagree, but on a spiritual level, I feel I can say this with confidence. The real crisis is when we're in a famine and nobody's hungry and we're in a dry land and nobody's thirsty. That's right. That scares me. Psalms 34, 8 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. If you will just get a taste of this next level of living, it will be worth it to discipline yourself spiritually to pursue God with hunger and thirst. Did you want to share anything there? I do. Um, Matthew 5, 6 this was the first thing that came to my mind. Pastor Chip just mentioned the word hunger and thirst. And this was what came to my mind. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Uh. And I think that one of the things that has been detrimental to the health of the body of Christ today is the church has spent more time convincing us that our humanity's struggles will overpower us forever, and that's okay because Jesus has grace that covers our sins. Then they have teaching us that it's possible to live a righteous and holy life before Christ. And one of the things the Lord showed me today, I'm just going to read it, is this. I believe that the chief reason we have believed the lie that true righteous living is not possible is because somewhere along the way, the people became hungry for and filled with other things, whether it be religion, comfortability, pride, or a numerous amount of other things. If the body was hungry, we would be living righteous lives because there is a promise mm. that those who hunger and thirst will be satisfied. This is not another writer. This is not someone else. This is Jesus himself in the Sermon on the Mount, standing before, in, the, in one of the only recorded sermons we have Jesus speaking. He's telling you, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, blessed are those because they yes, will be filled. Yes. It doesn't say you may be filled. It doesn't say it you could you be, be filled. He says you will be filled. So when we hunger, I think the litmus test for it all is if you are being filled with righteousness, guess what? It's you're, you're hungering and thirsting. Yeah. If you're doing anything less than walking in obtainable righteousness, you're not hungering and you're not thirsting because the Savior himself said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst. And he ended it with a promise for they shall be satisfied. I believe that God is restoring the call to the garden in this time, and we have a responsibility to prepare a place of intimacy. 
During this hour, God is allowing us to see the weakness of the people and systems that we have been fed by for so long. Mm. The sole purpose of him exposing the weakness of the earth is to introduce us to the strength of the kingdom of heaven. There are men and women coming forth who will forsake comfortability and dive into intimacy. There's a generation of believers coming whose thirst for the things of God far surpasses the mistakes of the generation before them. There's a revolution of the kingdom thinkers arising from the ashes of a suppressive education system. Christ will become mainstream. Media will speak to God's goodness again, and the world will once again know that all power, all authority, and all good things come from heaven. These times to come will not be easy, but they will be fruitful. Wow. Only those who hunger will eat, only those who thirst will drink, and only the meek shall inherit the earth. Mm-mm-mm. Wow. I'm telling you. The crisis is famine without hunger and dryness without thirst. It is. Taste and see that the Lord is good. We have got to be moving into a position of pursuit. Right. And it can't just be a one time thing. That's right. This needs to become a spiritual discipline where we are pursuing God at all times. And that we are always hungry and thirsty for more. Those who are hungry and are tasting will be promoted during this time. I'm telling you, it's it's going to happen. He's gathering the workers now. That's what's going on. And and this will be um, an alignment shift. So pastors, get ready. Ministry leaders, get ready. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, get ready because there's going to be an alignment shift and people who were your key supporters and and your workers in the past seasons may not be anymore when the church comes back because if they can't get on board with the next level of living locomotive, it's like a train, amen, full steam ahead, you cannot coast anymore you you think that you can hold a position of rank in the church and have some prestige and have some title that's not going to matter look church is not going to be the same ever again it has now changed and it's a good thing that it's changed and and i believe that one handshake will cancel a religious spirit that's what's getting ready to happen because god is going to birth out new relationship in the church and and it's going to be kingdom family amen Across denominations, business streams, collaborating and partnering with church ministries and one church uh, partnering with another church because of a new wine skin that's needed for the new wine that's going to pour out. Amen. Grace. This is why we're talking about grace. Grace is going to cancel old road mm. roads and old ways. So the religious spirit has to go. Amen. Yes. It, it can't it can't exist anymore and and so grace is going to cover that just like it's covered our sin grace is going to cancel the old roads and the old ways and god will give those who come hungry and thirsty new keys to be an unlocker you're going to be able to to unlock things in the spirit that not it's not it's not that it's been kept from the children of god it's been kept for the children of god amen And so these keys are going to be uh, handed over as like a mantle, a mandate. And those who are spending this time at a higher level of living, praying instead of wasting time, transforming, transfiguring, changing, those are the ones that God's going to have their heart. and, And all of a sudden, uh, the heart is going to be the matter. And and so what's going to happen is those that taste and see that the Lord is good, those who are desperate to determine the destination of not just where they're going, but for the church, for goodness sakes, the ones that understand how to be hungry, a famine without hunger and a dry land with no thirst is a sad place to be. But I'm going to be honest with you. I think that's where we are. 
And so God had to put a streak and halt to everything. I'm not saying that God caused this virus. I'm saying God allowed it. He could stop it if he wanted to. But maybe we better get busy doing the things of God and get real hungry and thirsty for him. And there's no telling what God might do. It's going to be a revival, a reformation, and and um, a new movement altogether. Right. It's going to be something that we've never seen before, and I'm super excited about it. That's right. That's good. You had one more thing I think you wanted to share. I just, I just wanted to pray. Okay. Um, I just The Lord gave me this prayer today. I was just in my office and just spending some time with Him and just seeking Him for what he wanted to say. And and I just believe this is such an important time. And I believe that God is so desperately wanting his people to hear him. Yes. And so um, I want to pray. And then I want to speak something that the Lord has, has said to me over you. And so before you pray, yeah. I want to, uh, because I think earlier in the um, time that we had, I said, if someone had a comment Yes. Uh, and I can't remember, I can't remember what it was for, but um, understanding the pursuit of God, understanding the next level of living, understanding the model of walking in his grace. God, look what God has done for us this That's week. Right. My goodness. I, I mean, from Hebrews 4, 16 to 1 Corinthians um, 16, 9. Is that right? Um, all the way to tonight, where we're in Psalm again. It, you know, he, he gave us Isaiah 55, 5 and said that the ministry is going to uh, go before the nations and the nations will come running to us. Isn't that exciting, Christ Walk family? That excites me to know that God is going to use us that way. But for that to take place, we have to get really hungry and really thirsty and pursue God like never before. So, Kayla, uh, do we get any comments in by chance? There's quite a few. Yeah, okay. All right. Because I feel like this is important for tonight. It's our last night. We're not on a time agenda. Um, I don't know how many people church. are listening. How many people are listening? Um, oh. Okay. About 30 so some odd people. Um, Pastor John's going to pull these up. And, um, you know, one of the most powerful things that's happened this week is two nights ago when we had the open prayer time, yeah. um, when we asked for your prayer needs. And and uh, so this is something similar to that. I'm, I'm not sure uh, what he's getting ready to pull up. Um, we're trying to pull it up on, on the comments section. Some of you that have sent messages, it's really slow for some reason. We've worked with this all week and um, we've made great strides. So thank you for bearing with us on our connectivity um, and everything that's going on. Is it not working? Oh, my yeah, I'm not sure why we've got a delay in pulling up the comments here. Okay. Hang on just a second. Maybe okay. We're... Now we, we maybe are getting there. So um, many of you have followed us all week. Oh, Pastor John's going to And uh, we want to thank you for right. taking the time to follow and learn. Understand we're learning this right along with you. And it's just a super, uh, it's just a super way to, to be able to communicate with the Lord, but to stay connected to each other and learn together. All right. So we have Miss Dawn says the word of the Lord is coming forth. We need to be secret place dwellers. Ah, Miss Don Perkins said we need to be secret place dwellers. Apostle Kevin Simmons said on point. Apostle Jesse says, yes, we are called to prepare him a tabernacle where we can meet with him. These are the times we are in. Amen. So glad I'm brought to the kingdom of God for such a time as this. Yes, it is for such a time as this, apostles. Uh, and, and I know you know that. I mean, this is a new era. This is not just another season that we're in. This is a new era of time. Um, and many of us could see that prophetically months ago. And, and so here we are, mm, not knowing, this must be really good, not knowing ahead, what we're going to be into. Apostle Jesse has something she wants to she say. She said one of the first things that goes when a person is dying is their appetite. We need, to, we need to make sure we're not dying spiritually. Come on, apostle. <laughs> Give us more of that <laughs> word. That's right. Be hungry and thirsty. And I'm telling you, if you're snacking on something other than the pursuit of God, that's why you're not hungry. Amen. Right. Come on. Right. Quit snacking. I'm going to look on the valley. <laughs> 
That was good. Possible. Well, Granny's the only one to comment on the valley. My mom. <laughs> What's my mom got to say she tonight? Said, hey. She said, hey, hey, mom. All right, let's see. <laughs> We're still checking here. Don't leave us yet. Might be something that you need to hear. I only see, it says there's 50 comments, but I only see like 10. We're only seeing 10 comments and there were 50. Kayla, you might have to feed something to us. Don't don't leave us. We're We're trying to be fair to everybody and Miss Dawn said we must live in the high places. Our hearts must become the throne of God. Amen. The pursuit of God will move us to the next level of living. It is a high place, and it is the heart of God. He truly wants us to be there. You're right, Dawn. That is so good. Okay, well, I think we're going to have to go on. Uh, we've, there's been a delay in us getting the comments. I'm not sure what's happening. Okay. The comments are there, but for some reason we can't pull them up. Um, Marilyn Martin said kingdom families. Kingdom families is that's exactly what it's going to be. It, um, the Lord has pulled the church back and um, the Bible tells us clearly in Hebrews that we need to keep meeting together to cheer one another along. Can you imagine what's going to happen when we're able to meet together again? Miss um, Dawn also said the final era is a great awakening. It's the call of the spirit, the preparation for the coming of Christ, which will include purification, reconciliation, maturity of the bride, perfection into the image of Christ, sin judged on Christ, tabernacle and his people. Amen. It, it is all of that. It's all of that swelled up. And, and that's why he has us in this holding pattern. The Lord wants to reveal so much to us and, and his word has it all capsulized. But there are things that I believe God's going to breathe into people and there's going to be words of knowledge and words of wisdom and prophetic words spoken like never before. Amen. Today, God partnered Sunshine Circle with Pizza Hut, and we'll be feeding Sunshine Friday night. Amen. How about that? Our Sunshine Circle ministry, that's our, uh, for those of you that are not uh, here in the, in the Christ Walk Church, but you follow us, uh, we have an inner city mission outreach uh, about a half a mile from here. Shane and Tammy Barron lead that along with some of our uh, church family. And so now Pizza Hut has partnered and they're going to be feeding families um, starting when? Friday. Starting, which was today? Amen. That'll be the second uh, local restaurant that is partnering with us. Um, we have another restaurant that's going to partner with us to help with some outreaches into the community with the children. Amen. Anything else? Yeah, that's pretty much it I'm seeing right now. Well, thank you for those comments. I'm sorry it was lagging behind. And uh, I just think it's important that we allow you the chance to say what you want to say. And I, and I know others can read it as it's posted, but but I think uh, for us to be able to validate that and to say it, uh, I'm not on Facebook. Um, so for me, this is very exciting to get to hear what, you, what you're saying, what the Lord's revealing to you. I miss our church family so much. My goodness. Um, I just miss you so much. And, and I'm concerned about um, those who may not be on social media or maybe, you know, the enemy's using this as a time to, to pull them away or to hold them back. And, and they're, they just don't understand to stay connected this way. Church family, listen to me. I want you to pray for God to reveal who those people are within our family. And I want you to call them. I want you to text them. Men, this is our opportunity to step up. Ladies, it's your opportunity to step up also. We need to, even the youth, this is your opportunity to step up within the youth ministry and the children's ministry. We need to stay connected and we need to put the fire, as, as Don said, it's a refining time. It is a refining time. We need to put the fire underneath one another 
Iron sharpens iron. One man sharpens another. There's nothing wrong with that. We have got to stay connected because I know what the enemy's plan is. The enemy's plan is to take the church out. That's right. And we are not going to stand for that. In fact, the church is going to come back different. And it's going to be a good different and stronger. Amen. All right. Do we have one more? Are we ready to? Let me look really quick. Okay. And this will be the last one that we stop to take. Um, it must be important because they're wanting us to, to share that. The, the last thing we were just going to say really quick about social media is if you do need help and you don't understand anything or something, you don't understand something, um, Kayla has put her phone number out there, I think, on our parent support page, and you can call her and she'll walk you through anything you need help That's with. That's great because I know sometimes for our seniors who, who didn't grow up and – everything that's digital and everything that's available. Um, it is hard to understand it, but once you or someone can explain it to you, then it becomes very easy. And I think you'll be like my mother who is 81 years old and loves to stay on Facebook. She loves it, loves it. She can't understand why I'm not on Facebook. I'm on Facebook right now, mom. But, um, I just, I want you to stay connected. It's so important. If you find yourself isolated and disconnected from the family, I don't know what the enemy may do with you over the next several weeks. Uh, and we are getting messages along the way as well, private messages about some struggles and things that are going on. I'm telling you, if, if you find that what we're telling you is not working, you're missing something. That's all I know to tell you. you there's something wrong. There's something. This model of walking in his grace is a spiritual discipline because it was established on the word. It was revealed through prayer and fasting. I promise you it will make you hungry and thirsty. And so you're, you're going to have to diligently go through each step. You may not see change overnight, but you will see change because every step is a transformational step. That's what it is to try to get you to a place where you're going from victory to victory and glory to glory and faith to faith an assignment to assignment. So, so Pastor Jonah um, revealed uh, or shared with me this revel revelation. It's a prayer, but it's a revelation prayer, uh, revelatory that the Lord downloaded to him. And um, he writes spoken words at times, but I, I don't know. I don't guess this is a spoken word as much as it is a prayer for um, our church, for this state, for this nation, for this world. Um, during this time of the coronavirus. And um, we will be making a decision, by the way, before he prays about what time we're going to um, stream church on Sunday. Uh, for the last two Sundays, we have tried at our normal church time, and it did not go well um, at all, either time. As you know, last Sunday, we finally posted at 2.10 yeah. p.m. So we're praying about possibly doing our Sunday morning church service Sunday night at 7 p.m. So um, I need to discuss that with Donna. We need to really pray about it. If you think that is a good idea, comment. Um, we don't want to risk not being able to get to you on Sunday morning um, because of connectivity issues. And that's because every church around the world, if they're in our time zone or uh, in this time zone, and even the next time zone, because one, of, uh, if they overlap each other, um, you know, depending on what kind of a, a service you're doing online, it may last for a while. And, and so it does affect connectivity. And so wisdom may say, I think wisdom does say either pre-record and do uh, what's called the premiere or um, have it at another time. And so I'm just thinking Sunday night at seven o'clock, you've been tuning in. If you would be uh, okay with that, I think it's a good idea. We haven't made a decision. We will let you know. But if you would like to see us uh, shift to Sunday night at 7 p.m., because maybe it's a better time for you. We won't risk losing connectivity. Um, maybe you could gather the whole family at that point on a Sunday evening. Let us know and let us hear. From you. So, uh, Pastor John, I want you to share this prayer because it's powerful. I want you to get into a mode of prayer now. And I want you to just start asking the Lord, God, am I really hungry? Am I really thirsty? Or am I dry? Am I, am I just in a dry place right now and, and I don't really even feel anything because that's not where you need to be. 
And I want you to be at that next level of living where you're pursuing God fully. So as Pastor Jonah prays, I want you to just open your heart up to Jesus and listen closely. Um, I believe this is a, a, a prophetic utterance of activation and direction. So I just want you to receive everything that God has for you in this. And, um, you know, just take, there may be some bones, but just take the meat and, and, and test it against the word. And, and I believe that this is really something God has for us as a body yes. of believers today. So right now, I just want to decree that we are released into our calling. I activate the gifts of God riding in the hovering presence of His Spirit, ready to release to be released on His children. I call forth tribes and companies, worshiping warriors, weeping prophets, strengthened, unsatisfied apostles, loving pastors, brilliant teachers, contagious evangelists. Let the boldness of lions abide in the hearts of men. Let the riches of kings fall on the resources of the simple. Let the wisdom of heaven infiltrate the thoughts of the foolish. I release prophetic grace for an entire generation of believers. Yeah. Hungry hearts, thirsty souls, righteous lives, sure pegs, monuments to the faithfulness of God, healing to the broken, strength to the weak, fires for the cold, beauty to the bitter, grace to the humble, power, authority, position, favor, increase. It will be an exceeding and abundant portions. Let it be dumped on the individuals and let the body reap its benefit. Let the workers come forth and bring forth the harvest in its season. Let pride and religion fall away. Let confusion and destruction invade the enemy's camp that not one soul should be lost. Let Christ be exalted. Father God, be praised. Holy Spirit, aid your people. Call forth the gifted yes. and gifts the called to change the world in Jesus' name. This is a call for today, a stirring of the hearts, a promise of what's to come. Never settle, never stop, never turn to the left or to the right. Approach the throne of grace. Let your cry be one of boldness. Mean what you pray and pray what you mean. The time of 50% or even 90% dedication is over. Come up. Come up to the higher places, says the Lord. Find identity in the Lord of heaven. Find healing in the mercy of Christ. Take hold of this time. Do not waste a moment. There is a blessing in the sacrifice. Come up, says the Lord. Come up to the higher places, and I will pour out my spirit upon you. Prepare yourself for reception. Come away to my presence. Become devoted to my passions. Say what I say. Do what I do. And see if I will not heal this land. See if I will not invest in my people. See that I will not let even a single word go unfulfilled. Taste of me. See that I am good. Come up to a higher place, says the Lord. Come up to higher places. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been a fantastic seven nights and God is moving and he's hovering and he's brooding in this atmosphere around us. And I believe that through his word, we can be equipped to handle whatever is happening. We can do this together, united in Jesus. We can overcome this. And so our prayer is that as we leave you tonight, you will stay connected with us along the way. But most importantly, stay in the word and stay connected with the Lord Take the time to make your time praying time. Amen. Yeah. Hebrews 4.16 is important. You need to write that verse out. Tie it around your neck. Meditate on it day and night. Become a doer of the word. Amen. So thank you. God bless you. Thank you for sending comments. And stay posted as to when we will be back on Sunday. Uh, church family, we love you. Thank you to all those that are listening. God bless you. Have a good night.